For a little change of pace, I'm going to talk about some things I really liked in Persona 5. And a uh, quick reminder in case anyone forgot, but I really do like the game. I may focus on what I don't like or things I think could have been better, but that's mostly because I find those things more interesting to talk about. Really though, I think the game is pretty fucking awesome, so let's get this circle jerk started. One of the most standout features of Persona 5 is its style. Now, to be honest, these sorts of aesthetic things aren't all that important to me. That said, even I can see what an outstanding job they did with this game. The style is very distinct, very strong, and very deliberate. And while style may not be too important to me, I do appreciate attention to detail. The consistency and pervasiveness of the game style is just plain impressive, and most of it looks pretty fucking good to boot. I could go on, but there's already lots of people who have made videos about how awesome Persona 5 style is with a lot more knowledge and a lot more passion than I have for this particular topic. Hell, if you scroll down, YouTube's probably recommending a few of them to you right now. There is one more aspect related to the game style that I want to mention though. See, way back when the first gameplay videos of Persona 5 were released, and we got our first glimpse of the game's menus, my first thought was actually, wow, that looks cluttered. I was afraid that all the style would make the menus annoying to navigate. Happily though, Persona 5 succeeds at having both style and function in its menus. Things are fairly well organized, navigation is intuitive, and transitions between menus are fast. They even let you exit the menu from any page instantly by pressing triangle. I know this is a feature that a lot of other games have, but somehow it's also a feature that a lot of other games don't have, and it's something that always pisses me off when it's missing, especially in games with slow menu transitions. I tend to be pretty big on little things like that. Of course, not everything in the menus is perfect. While I think they did a good job overall, there were some little things that I think they could have done better. But I already went over those in the Little Things Miscellanea video, so I'll be keeping them to myself in this one. Good news though is that Persona 5 also does a lot of little things right, like having lots of fast travel options, almost too many. Pretty much every point of interest can be jumped to immediately from the minimap. And dialogue history, another thing that a lot of games have, but still far too many don't. P5 even lets you replay the voice clip of a line of dialogue, which is a nice little touch. Oh, and the option to automatically re-equip the persona I had equipped at the start of a fight after it ends. I don't know how most people play, but I always make myself an a nit bitch persona that has lots of agility and a bunch of auto kajas and shit, and while it's been a while since I've played the other persona games, I'm pretty sure in at least one of them I had to manually re-equip my a nit bitch after each battle, which was really fucking annoying. You can also retry bosses, see which confidants you can spend time with and rank up from the map, fast forward and skip cutscenes, auto battle, auto target weakness in battle, auto heal out of battle, and a whole bunch more little quality of life things that I'm sure I could list if I weren't too lazy to think about it for more than a minute. But I want to get back to things with a bit more substance. Still, it is important to point out that Persona 5 overall did a pretty damn good job with polish and quality of life features, which is something I really appreciate. The SMT series, as I'll be calling it since I don't even want to try pronouncing Shin Megami Tensei, has some of the best turn-based battle systems out there. The most prominent feature of the series' battle systems is the emphasis on elemental weaknesses and resistances. While the specific effects vary from game to game, hitting a weakness gives significant advantages beyond simply dealing extra damage. In the Persona games, the biggest such advantage is that you get an extra turn whenever you knock an enemy down. Knocking down is... uh... Actually, I'm going to assume the people watching this already know how the battle system works. Anyway, I really like this emphasis on hitting and protecting weaknesses. I've heard people criticize SMT's battle systems as being very paint by numbers, and I can certainly understand this position. Enemy is weak to fire, attack with fire. This one's weak to electric, wonder what I should do about that. But while I see where they're coming from, to me, the strength of the system is more in the out of battle decision making. The most obvious form of this in Persona is the Personas themselves. The better you do at ensuring Joker's Personas have a good coverage of elements, the easier battles will be. And honestly, even looking at the turn by turn decision making, I'd rather have this kind of paint by number strategy than a paint by the same strongest attack every fucking turn strategy. I know that's not the only other option, but there have been plenty of battle systems that use it. Plus, painting by numbers isn't always as easy as it sounds. What if Joker misses? Does someone else have the element you need? What's the best way to stall till his next turn? And you gotta consider your SP. Is it worth using Jokers, or can you wait for someone else to take this one? And this decision making is made even more interesting by one of my favorite additions to the battle system in Persona 5, Baton Passing. 
Baton passing not only allows you to get Joker or whoever else you may need a turn, it's also incentivized with a damage boost. The more you pass, the more your all-out attack will do, as well as every attack along the way. Basically, you're rewarded for figuring out a way to spread out the knocking down of your enemies. And if the extra damage isn't enough of an incentive, Baton Passing also lets you get those sweet, sweet SP adhesives to proc. Personally though, and I wouldn't be surprised if I'm alone in this, I think it would have been cool if Baton Passing was mandatory. That is, for a single knockdown chain, no party member could act more than once. I know, this is a straight restriction compared to what you can do now. But I think it would force more interesting thought and strategy in battles, especially if enemy sets were designed to discourage multi-target skills. Like, two enemies in a set are weak to fire and drain ice, the other two are weak to ice and repel fire. Could even go full press turn with it and make hitting a drain repel or the like punish you by ending the baton chain, even if you also knock something down. Also, since it's possible to have up to five enemies in a fight, I'd add a bonus of Joker getting to do a free follow-up attack whenever you have all four party members knock down an enemy, but there's still one standing. I'm actually pretty curious to see what people think of this idea. Personally, I really do think it could add significant strategic depth to battles, which is totally welcome in my book. Hell, I'd probably even like it if all the enemies got to stand back up as soon as you drop the baton. Though, maybe that part could be exclusive to the higher difficulty levels. And speaking of difficulty levels, big thanks to the developers for finally letting me change the difficulty level during the game. This is something that I strongly feel every game should allow, and while things have fortunately been trending pretty well in that direction, there's still far too many games that don't. I also think it's pretty cool of them to add the safety difficulty for people who just want to experience the story. Not something I'm personally interested in, but I like seeing developers implement options that let as many people as possible enjoy their games. Lastly, in regards to the battle system, Persona 5, and SMT in general, is really good about making battles fast. Most significantly, the skill animations are rarely more than a couple seconds long. In the late game, there start to be a few skills with longer animations, but it never gets to the point where you get bored watching them. At least I never did. And that is very much appreciated. The button mapped menu is also nice for battle flow. The fewer lists I have to scroll through to pick my action, the better. Now if only the skills were presented in a radial menu. Maybe next game. The dungeon design in this series gets better every game. Or, at least, it does if you consider Persona 3 at the start of the series. Can't really speak of the earlier ones myself, but since 3, we've gone from generic, randomly generated dungeons, to stylized randomly generated dungeons, to stylized handcrafted dungeons. With a generic randomly generated dungeon on the side. Mementos aside, the dungeons in Persona 5 are really well crafted and a huge step up for the series. You get a map to fill in, deliberately place chests to open, puzzles to solve, lots of unique areas that fit the theme. Really, these dungeons aren't just a step up for Persona, they're pretty damn good in general. I also want to point out that the safe rooms are pretty well spaced for the most part. The gap between safe rooms was usually around 20 to 30 minutes for me, which is long enough to make me care about getting a game over, but not so long that I want to stop playing when I do. I do think a few of the later dungeons were a bit on the long side, but that's pretty much my only issue with the palace design. And on a related note, hooray for fighting actual personas in battle, instead of those boring, generic, frequently palette swap shadows from P3 and P4. So much more fun and interesting this way. I really like how the game lets you cheat on the class questions without having to pull out your phone or laptop or whatever. I mean, technically they don't tell you the correct answer, they tell you what everyone else who played the game answered, but aside from maybe the first handful of people to play the game, the correct answer is always, overwhelmingly, the most picked answer. Even when the correct answer is incorrect, interestingly enough. Seems I'm not the only one that uses a guide. That aside, I like how the class questions have proper setup and payoff in this game. You can cheat all you want for the basic class questions, which is good because they're often just a matter of luck whether you know the answer. But when exams come around, you're on your own, uh, unless you pull out your aforementioned phone or whatever. That's okay though, because the test questions are about the same things as the class questions, so if you were paying attention back when you were allowed to cheat, you'll know everything you need to know now that you can't. You can certainly make an argument against the fun of listening to school lectures and taking tests being a gameplay mechanic, but like it or hate it, it is well constructed. Hell, I wish they did similar things for the confidant dialogue choices. Like, in one confidant event, they tell you about something they like, then in a later one, you have a dialogue choice that requires you to remember that something they like. Obviously, they can't all be like that, but there could be some. Oh, but I'm supposed to be praising the game today. Moving on. 
I think we can all agree that confidants are pretty awesome. I certainly think they are. But what I really want to call out here is how awesome it is that every confidant in Persona 5 has a unique set of benefits. In the previous games, the confidants, or social links as they were called, outside of the other party members, always felt rather underwhelming. Sure, you still got the bonus for fused personas of the associated arcana, but compared to all the awesome extra bonuses that party members got, it just didn't feel like enough. In Persona 5, that's no longer an issue. Every confidant has their own set of abilities for you to unlock. And even more impressive, most of them are actually useful. They did a good job making most confidant's abilities actually feel rewarding and worth unlocking. But what I'm most impressed about is how few of these confidant abilities feel like quality of life features that should have been there from the start. That would be an easy way to create rewards. Take an existing feature, cut it from the start of the game, and then give it to the player sometime later. Fortunately though, for Persona 5's confidant abilities, there's only one ability that I truly feel this is the case for. Priestess's level 7 ability, which shows you if your currently highlighted target will null, repel, or drain your attack. This is info that, prior to unlocking this ability, is literally one button press away. It's a convenience feature, and one that I think should have been there from the start. There are a few other confidant abilities I personally would have liked to be baseline, like being able to see enemy abilities and being able to swap party members in battle, but that's really personal preference. Those things give actual advantages, so they can't be called quality of life features. I do pretty strongly feel that baton passing should have been unlocked sooner though. This is because I find it such a valuable tool that I actually felt significantly discouraged from using party members in the palaces they join in, since they can't learn Baton Pass until after their first palace. If anything, you should feel extra encouraged to try out the new member, at least in my opinion. And as a side note, this would definitely have to be the case if they did that forced Baton Passing thing I mentioned earlier. And I know, I know, I'm supposed to be praising the game. But in a way, this is praise, because out of the dozens of confidant abilities, those are the only few that I take issue with, and that, in my opinion, is pretty damn impressive. Well, that just about does it for my praise of Persona 5. Of course, this isn't a comprehensive list of praiseable things in the game. For instance, I think the game overall has a pretty good story and characters, but there isn't anything particularly noteworthy about them. They're pretty standard, but a well-executed standard. Hell, there's probably a lot of standard things Persona 5 does well, but I'm not going to be fucked to sit here and list them. But hey, feel free to do so yourselves in the comments, and while you're there, you can tell me what you think of my forced baton passing idea. Do you think it would make the game more fun? Prefer things the way they are? Think there are any truly standout facets of the game I failed to praise in this video? Think I did too much critiquing for a video titled Praise? Did I praise something you were hoping I'd complain about? Let me know and have an awesome day. So, apparently it's possible to skip part of the Akechi boss fight. Didn't mean to, I just wanted my double money for my fortune reading. But apparently, by finishing his first two pets off with an all-out attack, you can skip the Robin Hood fight and go straight to Loki. I don't think this is supposed to be possible. The scene afterwards still started with Akechi falling to the ground. I think they just programmed in that double fights skip the second half when you finish the first with an all-out attack. And then they forgot to make this double fight an exception. Oh well.